I'll never forget going to shul on Yom Kippur with my dad. One of the things that I always noted as a young boy was the announcements that would be made from the bimah uh, of the amounts that would be paid by members of the congregation to read from God's law. How can the amount that people are paying be announced like this to read from God's word? Something about it seemed as if to cheapen God's word for me. And it obviously that type of thing really got me to start questioning what I believed, firstly about Judaism and secondly about God. I was a pretty godless young man. I was a wild guy. Um, I was a, I was a wilde chaya, as they say in Yiddish in school. You're a little gangster child, a little bugsy malon. I would go to shul every day as an Orthodox Jew at a Jewish day school in Johannesburg, South Africa. For me, God's existence was obvious. But how to talk to this God, how to reach this God, why can't the Buddhists reach God the way they want to, Muslims the way they want to, Catholics the way they want to, and Jews, you know, th th this is the way we do it. I was really the ultimate relativist. And I lived my life like the ultimate relativist. I went into advertising. And if one thing's going to really affect your level of faith in humanity and increase your level of cynicism, it's advertising. Because the advertising industry, as you probably know, is based on manipulation of individuals to believe certain things. And so when you look at advertising, you start to look at what advertising teaches us and what institutional religion teaches us. It's not too much of a stretch to see the parallel between the two. So literally by the time I was 22, 23 years old, I had pretty much given up on the idea of any kind of religion being true. I was literally at the peak of my career. I was flying around the world at the age of 28, living in five-star hotels, parties and foreign shores with all kinds of entertainments, beautiful models. That for me was the highlight. I thought I was invincible. And I came back from a party one night and I fell asleep behind the wheel I'd been drinking. And I woke up with the motor car on top of me. My face was pinned to the ground and the roll bar, because it was a convertible, was pressing down on my head. I couldn't feel my arms and my legs. I couldn't lift my head. And I woke up with a car on me and believing for at least 10 minutes that I was going to be a quadriplegic for the rest of my life. That was the kindness of God saying to me, hey, wake up. For my 28th birthday, somebody gave me, a friend of mine gave me a Bible for my birthday. And, you know, you give a, a relativist in advertising a Bible for their birthday. It's kind of like, eh, thanks, but really no thanks. I thought, why don't I turn, just out of curiosity, just have a look at the New Testament. You know, when you grow up a Jew, you kind of immediately biased against anything that has to do with Jesus. The programming gets pumped into your head from the time you're a kid. Before I knew it, there were tears pouring from my eyes because I knew that no man spoke like this man. And as a writer, I knew that the words and the thoughts that Jesus was expressing were impossible for even an author to come up with. They defy human logic entirely. And yet they felt like to me, this is truth. I decided obviously to go back and look at the Old Testament. And there, sure enough, in the Old Testament that I'd supposedly read so many times were these prophecy, prophecy upon prophecy, that had come true in Jesus to the letter, simply. And it couldn't be denied. It wasn't like a Nostradamus thing where you go, well, I think this might be JFK and maybe he's referring to Hitler now. Right there in black and white was the date of the Messiah's arrival, how he would arrive, where he would be born, how he would die, how he would die for the sins of his people in intricate, perfect detail. And that is what you can call a mind bomb. It's a logic bomb because there's no escape from that. I underwent a fundamental change of character, totally different. You wake up, I woke up one day in the same skin and I was a different person. You see, the world of advertising is about chasing, chasing the dream that you will never achieve. We need to keep selling more products, so keep chasing. The world of religion, whether you're a Catholic or you're a Jew, you just keep doing, doing, doing. One day, maybe I'm gonna earn the favor of this God which is of course ludicrous because all of us have fallen short of this perfection. The standard of heaven is perfection. No one 
has ever achieved that or will ever achieve it because of all the things they've done wrong. So the chase to pursue is fruitless and it is the chase of advertising and the chase of religion. In Yeshua comes the peace to know that you're accepted by Almighty God, not because of what you've done, but because of what He's done. Satisfaction and peace can only be found in Jesus Christ.